Hi, I'm Kat from the Dyscalculia Network and today I'm going to talk to you about poppets. Now I'm a bit late to the party probably because I haven't got a young child myself but I expect a lot of you have got these in various forms uh, around your house. So what happened to me was I was teaching a pupil, it was her birthday and just before the lesson she was showing me her birthday presents and one of them was a small poppet and straight away I was really interested in a poppet and said oh I'll have to get one of those for the maths room because we love a fidget toy. Anyway, I was straight after the lesson, I had a little Google and I was so excited when I found a 10 by 10, 100 frame poppet. Oh my goodness, I was like, it was in my basket and delivered by Amazon the next day, I have to confess. So I was thinking, what can we do with a 100 square poppet? There is so many possibilities and everything you can do with a 100 square and also so visual. This one is really, really colourful, which really helps to distinguish the tens, love a rainbow. And I was thinking straight away, what can we do? So I've already thought of loads of ideas, but I'm sure you can think of many more. So the obvious start is just building single digit numbers. Can you build me a six? They've got a really delicate, but quite satisfying popping sound. Everyone in my house has been popping this all weekend. Um, the adults can't let it go. They're worse than the children. Um, we could build a six and say, how many more do we need to build a 10? Or we could just build a six and say, how many more to make 11? We could do some bridging strategies with it. So nice and visual, tactile. You can talk about the numbers as you're doing it. The child's going to love popping them. Lots of satisfaction. We could add two digit numbers. So we could say two uh, single digits. So we could say, well, let's pop a four and then let's pop another four. How many have we got all together? I popped a nine there. That's helpful, isn't it? Um, so we could do uh, pop four and a four to make eight. We could then build tens in this. So we could build a 10 and another 10. How many have we got there? It's really satisfying doing this, guys. I can honestly tell you. So a 10 and a 10 makes 20. What if we had 20 and three more? What number would we build? So I'm thinking of lots of counting, lots of number bonds, lots of addition, subtraction, bridging skills. And then place value, a 20 and a 3 makes 23. I could link that to a game really easy. I've already thought I could get my 10s and 1s, guys. Throw a number. I got 25. I build 25. My pupil could have one of these. They could throw and they could build 42. And we would have a really good comparison of um, the difference between their number and mine. Who's bigger, who's is smaller, greater. You, you, good opportunity to use voca different vocabulary. I'm also thinking we could do it to make 100. So I've got 25. How many more do I need to make the next 10? One skill, make the next 10. And then how many more to make 100? I'm thinking there's literally endless ways we could use a poppet for this. Counting in twos, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. What would be that like if we counted it this way? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. How do they look different going vertically or horizontally? Literally, the possibilities are endless, guys. I really hope that you grab one of these um, and have a go and see what you can do with it. See all the different ways. I think the children will be really engaged in this, really enjoy using it. And it's really good to have a different um, visual um, and concrete representation of numbers, not just a standard Dean's block or other things. It's always good to give children other uh, ways to see number. Hope you enjoy it. Have good fun. I'm certainly looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day.